Oklahoma City elected the first publicly non-binary state legislator in the United States. Maury Turner is 27 years old. Prior to the election, they were regional field director for the ACLU's campaign for smart justice. Turner is also the first Muslim to serve in Oklahoma's House of Representatives. And joining us now is Representative-elect Maury Turner. Thank you for being with us. Representative-elect Turner, you won more than 70 percent of the vote in Oklahoma's House District 88. First of all, were you surprised by the landslide? Um, no, I wasn't. Um, just in my honest opinion, uh, our biggest hurdle in, in being one of the most progressive places to live in Oklahoma was the primary. Um, and, and when I saw a record number of folks turn out in a primary, um, that was when I knew that um, we, we probably had it in the bag for, for November, but um, I, I it, it was it was still really remarkable. Um, so, well, tell us what led you to run for office, um, and were you, you at all worried about the reception that you might receive on a statewide level? Though your district, as you say, is particularly liberal, that's not necessarily the case in all of your state. Yeah. Um, uh, so the perception of being a Muslim um, and, and, and running for office is there was a lot that I guess I had kind of put on myself for it, um, uh, a lot of pressure. But um, the, the, most of the backlash I received came from out of state, so it wasn't something I was too concerned about. The things from in-state were, um, uh, were more along the lines of, like, why are you running against another Democrat? Um, uh, this is a place that has been solidly dim for, for a number of decades. And so um, there was some pushback there. But the point of running is that visibility, right, uh, making sure that folks with our shared lived experiences are making the decisions um, uh, about things that affect our everyday lives. And and I think that is a message that just about everybody can get behind. Um, and so while there was some pushback here and there, I think the majority of uh, folks clearly um, really supported uh, this campaign or, or this movement that we've built, right? Our House District 88 members who live here and our honorary members who live across the world. So, Well, tell us, uh, what are some of your top policy goals? And, and to the thing that you were saying earlier about getting more pushback about running against another Democrat, how did you distinguish yourself um, to your, your constituents, to future voters? For sure. I think one of the most important things is that folks want that shared lived experience. We are in a place where folks who are making decisions about our everyday lives haven't had to live like us, right? So our legislature is comprised of um, uh, uh, lawyers and 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 farmers, right? Economists, things like this. And so. Um, uh, to be able to say like, yeah, like I am, I am queer, right? I am Muslim, I am gender diverse, right? I've had to figure out um, if I have enough SNAP benefits to hold me over to the next month, right? We need folks who, who have had to live like everyday Oklahomans making decisions. And I think that is one of the big things that really drew people to, to this campaign um, uh, when it comes to policy. So um, I think one of the first and foremost things is that a couple of weeks ago before the election happened, there um, was a, a kind of ice shift that came through Oklahoma. And so it took down a lot of power, um, uh, a, a good hundreds of thousands of Oklahoma uh, folks, Oklahoma folks who live in Oklahoma City are without power, right, still to this day. The folks who got power back um, yesterday, 30 mile an hour winds came through and knocked power out um, again. And so we've created this structure, um, this infrastructure, this energy infrastructure that's monopolized. And so being able to, to break that monopoly, making sure that folks don't have to pay this entity to cut down um, trees back from power lines, those are the types of things that I want to work on first and foremost, um, but also making sure that we are continuously working on justice reform and what that looks like. Um, justice reimagined, right? And one of the things that we have seen is that you, this is a system that can't necessarily be reformed, but it can be reimagined with our community in mind and rebuilt. And so uh, making sure that juries have the full range of sentences before they find someone guilty or not guilty, making sure that folks who, who have felony convictions can possibly run for office, restoring voting rights to folks who are currently incarcerated, um, uh, and, and making sure that folks who are incarcerated but have not been convicted of a crime have access to be able to vote in our county jails and things like that. 
sounds like you have a lot of things uh, that you're looking forward to doing when you get into the Oklahoma um, state legislature. It's also, I think, worth mentioning that um, as you're the first uh, practicing Muslim that's going to be seated in Oklahoma state legislature, the first non-binary um, state legislator in any state, that when you're talking about uh, about your candidacy, what you what you're saying is that you're actually more alike with the constituents that you're intending to serve than these traditional candidates. Um, was that a hard argument to make, given the ways in which you have broken barriers? I don't think so. I think we see here specifically in Oklahoma City and across the nation is that communities are asking what's next. And then on top of that are also handing over the playbook. So um, I am born and raised Oklahoman Muslim and, and community organizer. Um, and so that 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 wherewithal, right, that drive to be able to to fix the gaps that, that our government leaves for us, quite frankly, is something that I've always been able to do, right, especially when I learn and grow with my community. Communities want people who have been in community working with them, learning from them, right, growing with them. Those are the type of represent representatives that we need, right, and that's what communities are continuously asking for. And and when we when we provide people with that opportunity, I mm -hmm. that that's where they show up, right? All right. Well, I, I know we have to let you go, but really quickly, even though you've just been elected to your state office, do you have future plans to run for a national position? Where? What are your What are your long term plans? <laughs> Uh, for me right now, uh, I went to school to become a veterinarian. Uh, this was never the end goal for me, um, uh, but I am always about answering a call to action. Right now, this is where my community called me to be, um, uh, and and so this is where I am. Uh, if, if down the road they call me to do something greater, then then like I said, I'm all about answering a call to action. But but this is where I envision myself right now, and this is where my community um, needs me. And so this is this is where I'm going to stay. All right, Maury Turner, thank you for joining us. Thank you.